My name is Nero. I'm the uh, developer for BMC, the Badass MIDI Controller. Um, I wanted to give you a quick introduction to BMC, what it does, what it is, what you can do with it. BMC is a library specific to the Arduino compatible TNC boards, actually even more specific to the 32-bit uh, TNC boards. Uh, that is the TNC LC, TNC 3.2, 3.5, 3.6, 4.0 and 4.1. BMC is not designed to work with your typical Arduino board like the Uno, Mega, Micro, or the ESP boards out there. Just the uh, Tinsy boards. Um, so what exactly is BMC? BMC is a library that basically gives you the power to create a MIDI controller without having to write any code. On top of that, BMC gives you a desktop editor through the uh, through Google Chrome. Uh, it's a web app that you can also install onto your computer uh, as a PWA app. BMC is meant to make it as easy as possible for you to get started with your MIDI controller. BMC doesn't require you to write any code other than um, the basic uh, creating of an instance of, uh, of the library and little things like that. You can use an example, and uh, this is all done by using the config file maker, where you go in and create and specify how your build will behave, where your hardware is connected to, for example, like what pin your buttons are connected to, what pins your LEDs are connected to, and so on. BMC has all the support for buttons, LEDs, pots, encoders, relays, uh, and a bunch of other good stuff built right into the uh, library. So you don't have to write any of that code. The idea was for me to be able to build myself as many different sized MIDI controllers without having to create a sketch, write a sketch, write all the code for each one specific, uh, specifically without having to spend so much time programming this one MIDI controller to the point where I stopped playing guitar. You know, I'm a musician, obviously, um, and as a guitar player, you know, you want to have full control of your equipment, of your rig, right on the floor, right in front of you. And BMC is designed to do that for you. It supports all the hardware, it does all the reading, and handles all the storage, all the uh, EEPROM. Or if you use a, a Teensy board with an SD card reader, then it'll deal with the SD for you. You don't have to worry about any of that. It handles all the communication between the editor and the... Um, uh, in your MIDI controller. And you know, my goal, I guess, was to uh, have the power of a commercial MIDI controller, except being able to build it by myself. I'm going to start making videos, um, and as time goes, I will add videos that are specific to each uh, hardware type, things like ports, and so on. So. Bear with me with all of this. Uh, this is a massive project, and I'm going to do my best to get it all out there for everyone. For now, I have a um, board already running. It's my uh, development board. And all you have to do is access the editor. The URL is over here. You can do bmc.rockstar.com. I'll post links to everything. You select your input uh, and your output for uh, MIDI. You select the device ID. In this case, you can have actually uh, multiple devices, each one with a unique ID so that the editor can connect to each one individual. For the time being, we're just going to connect and take a look at what it looks like. Here you have my board. You can specify the layout, where you want every button to be and so on, uh, based on what your MIDI controller actually looks like. Uh, you can do this through the uh, config file maker. You can have, I believe as of right now, uh, you can have up to 96 pots, which you can see them on this side. You can have up to 64 buttons. You can have a ton of LEDs. You can have relays. You can have pots, encoders, a bunch of good stuff. Um, I'm going to just show you real quick uh, how easy it is to edit a button. We're going to double click on the button that I want to edit, and you're presented with uh, a list of events. In BMC, an event is basically uh, what's going to happen or what's going to trigger an action. 
in this case I have this build with only three button events compiled you can compile up to eight a uh, minimum of one but you can have as many as you need based on the capabilities of your board the, the size of your RAM and so on you can do little things like rearrange by clicking and holding here but let's take a look at one event here this uh, a simple MIDI control change on the left you see uh, you can actually specify the number of characters uh, for the name of that button that name will be displayed on the editor and also can be displayed on your board if you use a display and you want to code a display into your sketch um, you can name your button in this case we're going to call it just CC as a control change the next thing you're presented with is the trigger this is what will trigger this event on the, on the right side uh, in this case I have it set up to press you can have as you can see a press uh, release uh, always that means that um, the event will be triggered as soon as you release the, the button the foot switch state change which is uh, meant for latching foot switches and basically anytime the uh, switch goes from one state to the other one so in other words latched or unlatched uh, the event will be triggered you have hold which means that you press and hold the foot switch for a set time and then uh, by default is 500 milliseconds as soon as that time is met the event uh, will be triggered in this case uh, the MIDI control change will be sent out you have second press which means the second press you press the button the uh, event will be sent out at that point the press event will be skipped uh, on the second time you have a uh, double press which means you gotta quickly press the button twice and then the event will be sent up you have continuous which means that you press and hold the button and the uh, event will be sent out in intervals as you hold the button down once you let go it'll stop being sent out uh, you also have a couple of release methods these are all specific to the initial press in this case you have release after press that means that uh, if you press the button and you just press it quickly this event and as soon as you release the button this event will be sent out if you press and hold the button and you have the the release event sent to after press as soon as you let go of the button the event will not be sent out because the um, the hold um, trigger was triggered I guess so all of these are based on what was the previous event that was triggered or what was the previous action that happened you also have a couple of flags down here but we'll get into all that later a little clipboard to copy and paste events across uh, buttons uh, CC profiles are basically um, pre uh, defined um, control change uh, numbers that are based on the device in this case for example this device has these control changes so you can switch to that just to uh, if you're editing that one device specifically you can also create your own profiles later uh, we'll get a We'll go over that later on. Um, now, here's your event. That's the best part of it. Uh, you can select a ton of different events that are predefined. You can create your own custom events, user events, and so on. We'll dive into that later on. Uh, in this case, it's a control change. So we select what control number we're going to send it to. The value that we're going to send, let's select uh, 127. And the channel that we're going to select, we'll go with channel 10. Additionally, you have your ports. This is where BMC will send the message to. In this case, I have it set to a USB. You can have up to four serial MIDI ports on your Tinsy. You can have USB. That's actually by default disabled. Um, and you can have USB host, depending on the board that you're using. Uh, in this case, the 3.6, 4.0, and 4.1. Uh, you obviously have to uh, wire all the hardware for that. You can also create port presets so you can have um, a preset that would have let's say the USB and serial B and you always want to send to that port preset if later on you want to change it instead of serial B to send to USB host you just change the preset and the BMC will always send to that uh, place all we have to do is save uh, we whenever you open the editors you're saving to the page that it's currently active in this case uh, page one so all you have to do is save and your event is saved additionally BMC has pages that means every button can have a unique event on that page you can go on page one you can have all control change uh, buttons on page two you can have all program change buttons on 
page four, you can have, I don't know, whatever you want. Uh, and as you change page, you can actually assign a button to change pages. So you can easily scroll through all your pages. Uh, you can also save this event to all the buttons on, to the one button, to this button, in this case, button three, to all your pages. So it's pretty powerful. Uh, you can also scroll through your events or your buttons right here. You can hit the question mark for information. You can also clear this event completely. We're not going to do that right now. We'll just close either by hitting the X or the close button. Here you can see you can actually change pages right here. As you can see, every button, every LED, every pod has a brand new event. You can see here the name changing as you change to a different page. Uh, in addition, uh, you can see feedback. So I'm going to press that button right now. And you can see that I'm pressing it. I'm holding it right now, letting it go. Let's try a pot. Here we go. Uh, this is one encoder. Rotating it. I have actually, this is a, an aux jack. Uh, we'll get into that later on, but I'll show you. I have an expression pedal connect to it. And there we go. Pretty straightforward. These are LEDs right here. These guys are actually encoders and buttons uh, merged into one. You know, uh, you can actually have just an encoder, or if your encoder has a switch, you can wire the switch as well, and BMC can treat it as a button. Uh, and then you can go in and edit the button uh, or the encoder, and each one is completely independent, so it has its own events and whatnot. Uh, these are relays right here. LEDs, you can actually open an LED, and let's see what we got here. Uh, these are actual fast refers to the fractal systems, uh, Axe FX or uh, AX8, there's full syncing with them. Uh, you can test the LED by clicking here and the LED will light up on your board. LEDs have events as well. The difference is that uh, on buttons, for example, and because buttons are input, um, an LED, um, the event for that button is sent out or it's triggered by that button. With LEDs, the difference is that you can set the LED to turn on based on of, on an action. In this case, for example, if we go to a control change, uh, BMC will light up whenever we're on channel one, control four, or val in value zero, or you can make it so that it lights up whenever that value is 127. BMC will actually store all incoming and outgoing MIDI messages, uh, well, actually just program changes and control changes on all 16 channels. So BMC always keeps track of what's going on, uh, what control change you should be on. So this is done so that the LEDs can stay in sync. Uh, if you set an LED to a, a program change and you want one LED to light up on when you're on program one and another LED to light up when you're on program two, then you can do that as well. You can just um, select uh, pro MIDI program change and then specify that you want it on program zero, which is, you know, the very first program, obviously, uh, then you can have the next LED be on program one. Now, whenever BMC sends a program change uh, with a value zero, that LED that has, that's assigned zero will light up and the other one will turn off because you're not on program one anymore, you're on program zero. And so, so there's a lot that you can do with this. Actually, this is not even an LED. This is a pixel, which is a NeoPixel. Um, they are shown here as well. You can use uh, NeoPixels WS2812s uh, and only use one uh, pin on your Tinsy. BMC treats them just like um, uh, LEDs. Uh, the only difference is that you can select multiple colors. You also have RGB pixels. I believe I have one here. Yep. And the difference with RGB pixels from pixels is that you can have three events on each one. You have an event for red, an event for green, and an event for blue. So you can have the LED turn on and be red whenever you're on program zero, make it uh, turn on green whenever you're on program one, and then make it blue whenever you're on program two. So that way you have one LED with three states uh, available to you. Up here you have a little uh, toolbar. You can actually copy and swap across BMC. You can copy, for example, one page to the other one, one button to another one, and so on. You can uh, try doing right-clicking on a couple of things here, and you can copy and swap things, rename, edit the buttons, and so on. You also have the ability to import and export 
uh, data. Um, uh, this is all the editable data can be imported and exported. Um, for example, let's say that you have four buttons and you want to add one more. Once you do that, BMC will actually clear your EEPROM because now the the allocation for the for the EEPROM has changed. So with this, you can actually export your a backup of everything that you had for those four buttons. And then once you upload your new sketch and your EEPROM is completely wiped out, re-import that data. Uh, and that way you don't have to um, worry about having to create events again. BMC is pretty smart with that, with the import, uh, it will only import things that are available on your current build. So if your other build had 10 buttons and your new build has only two buttons, BMC will know that and only import what's necessary for it. You also have up here, you can see the version of the library that I'm running, the version of the editor I'm running. You have your settings, a bunch of other good stuff here. BMC can have multiple stores. That means that a completely set, a brand new EEPROM can be loaded. So let's say that your build only requires one kilobyte and you're using the built-in EEPROM uh, and that has four kilobytes, for example, on the TNC 3.6, uh, you can actually have four completely independent uh, builds uh, running on those 4K of, uh, on that 4K of uh, EEPROM. So uh, we'll get into that a, lot, a little later. You have your settings over here, tons of good stuff to uh, look into. There's actually uh, routing, so you can do uh, route any messages to come into USB into uh, any of the other available ports that you have. Uh, you can also just resend it to the same port, so basically a soft through uh, or a software through. Tons of uh, things available within VMC. You can click the logo to take a look at the... Uh, current versions and all that good stuff for now this is where i'm going to leave it we're going to disconnect uh, i'm going to add more videos later on uh, this is just the beginning bmc is still in beta uh, the library is more than safe to be used live already i've been using it live for the last year and a half two years almost the only reason it's still in beta is because I'm still going to be adding some more features to BMC and I want to clean up the code a little bit before the library becomes uh, officially released. Uh, you can find the library uh, on GitHub. I'll add links to everything. I'll add links to the um, editor so you can access it online. Uh, the editor can be saved as a PWM app, so it's pretty uh, easy to use. You know, you can actually already, you, you need a, a board running BMC to take to actually connect and uh, give it a try, but you can also open the config file maker to go take a look at how BMC is done, what kind of options you have available, all the um, little things that you can change. BMC also has an API, and that makes it so you can actually expand the use of BMC and go crazy with it. So for the time being, we're going to leave it here, and I hope um, you give BMC a, a, a try. Uh, I think you'll be very happy using BMC. Make sure that you check out the uh, documentation and the read the installation um, instructions. I'm going to do a video on uh, installing a fresh install of BMC so that you can uh, see exactly what you need to do. And this is BMC.